Well, fellas, thanks so much for joining us to talk about this song. Man, this is, man, this is like a, a dream team right here. I mean, come on, this is exciting. How's everybody doing? Great, good to see you, Jimmy. 
if you guys can't get together and write a great song, man, we, we might as well just all hang it up and go home. So, <laughs> but, um, thanks for making this work guys. I know you are in different locations, Brenton and Jonathan, you guys are here in Nashville. Uh, Leland, you're in route back to Texas, uh, somewhere, uh, in the middle of Mississippi, I think. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm in a, I'm in a mom van, what we call in the band band world, uh, just a good old Dodge caravan mom van. Just that's what you rent. That's a classic rental van. Awesome. So, and then Brett, you're in Atlanta, uh, down That's there. Right. So, man, thank you guys for jumping in. Man, this song is is so incredible. I remember Brett hearing some of the early demos that you guys were working on uh, for Passion, and this was one that I really circled early on, just because uh, it just felt the melody was so accessible and beautiful. And um, I love what the song said. And maybe start with you. Talk a little bit about uh, this song, a little bit of the meaning behind it. Yeah, well, about a year and a half ago, um, I, I'd kind of gotten down into um, this chapter in Exodus, you know, the famous chapter where Moses is up on the mountain in Exodus 33 and 34, and God reveals himself to, to Moses, and Moses says, show me your glory, and he comes down and he reveals his name uh, to Moses, and this name is one of the most quoted, requoted passages of scripture, but God reveals that he is, he's the Lord, but in all of that, that he's a compassionate and gracious God, that he's loving and forgiving. And, and that really stirred my heart. And, um, and so, you know, I think when you think about worship, you know, so much of it is, is our response to God's revelation. And here, what I kind of found, even for me personally, in this, um, in this passage, that God was wanting us to know early on that he is the Lord, like he is God. And that's good news for us. And so we put him in the rightful place, but also he lets us know about who he is and his heart for people, that he's kind and compassionate, and he wants to forgive sin. And, um, and so I, don't, I was just really, really inspired by that. And I really just, I feel like for me, I've just been so hungry uh, for a song that's just like adoring God, just like praising God for who he is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's one thing I love about this lyric is uh, it just it tells so much about the attributes of God. And um, Leland, you know, I was just listening to this morning and, you know, I was thinking about, you know, we, a lot of times we have these these words, obviously, in, in from the Bible and, and when we write songs. And I was just thinking about just the concept around Lord. You know, yeah. it's like we don't use that term really in, in our culture anymore other than to, to talk about God and that idea of authority and uh in our lives and it's like man i started thinking about that it's like man we as a people we we typically don't like that but what an important concept to know that you know when you say you are the lord we're putting ourselves under that banner under that authority of who god says he is man talk a little bit about just that chorus a little bit yeah well i i i think one of the things that really drew me to this conversation when we got together with us four in the room and Brett began to share from that passage and what God was sharing with him out of Exodus 33 and 34. Um, I think what was so refreshing about that, that conversation as we just began to talk about that. And I think why that language is needed again, um, even in our own personal walks with God um, also in the church. And I think you know, it, it's reminiscent to me of, of all the songs that I grew up listening to, the songs that um, as a kid in the church that really had a dramatic impact on my walk with the Lord. Um, and I think when, when I think about the Lordship of Christ, um, you know, he he is Lord just because he is, you know, <laughs> that's true. That's kind of heady. Um, but I think the he's necessary. And so he's in him that we live and move and have our being. And so it's easy, I think, for us to kind of think about those things about the Lordship of of Christ. But I think the part that really gets at my heart um, is is not his necessarily just his omnipresence or his power or because that honestly, you think about that too long and your head will explode. It's just, you know, God is too big. We We just we have such finite capabilities. But. I think the thing that really blows me away is is that that God, the God who spoke the universe into existence, 
the one who set the earth on its foundation so it wouldn't be moved, who told the waters where they could go and where they had to stop, you know, uh, that God um, got involved in humanity and was born and condescended from his throne and was born as a man into the world. And um, there Jesus is fully God and yet fully man. Yeah, man, that's so beautiful. And man, I, I love all of that. And Brent, I love the way this lyric progressive because it progresses because it does start with talking about the awesomeness of God. That verse two, it, it, it gets more personal and intimate, you know, when you get into that that lyric, you know, obviously the scripture is slow to anger, rich in love, you know, you're patient, always chasing after us. I mean, there's that that piece of God's heart. It's like, yeah, not only is he Lord. He's this authority, but he's a good God, you know, in the midst. Talk a little bit about uh, just, yeah, just those those verses, how you kind of walk through. And you guys crafted that. Well, I almost feel like Brett needs to tell the story of this, of how the song started. Because for me, those verses started lying in bed late at night and looking at a text on my phone. So yeah. um, <laughs> that's where all the trouble started for me. Yeah. Hey, Brett, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it did. I mean, in the summer of 2019, uh, you know, we, we were writing for Passion 2020, and that's where Leland and Jonathan came down to Atlanta, and actually Leland brought his dad's old Korg keyboard, this 80s, yeah. 90s keyboard thing, and so that sound just kind of carried us through, I think, and, um, but and it was detuned. It was, it was like it was detuned. We, nobody could get their guitars tuned. No, yeah, no. I think it was. It was sitting between four thirty two and four forty. It wasn't on four forty yet. So, yeah. had to, I don't even know what that means. Commit. I don't even know what that means. But it sounded awesome. And yeah. um, but so a lot of the bones of this song were there. Uh, but you know, here's one of the things that I love about the process of this song is that time was a real good friend, and patience was a really uh, great thing for this song to not hurry this song out the door. Even though it had something for me that I was like, ooh, like this is the thing for, as a songwriter that I'm like, I'm looking for all the time. But it just, it wasn't there. And so, you know, uh, the rest of the year came and went. Passion 2020 for us came and went. Amaz I mean, it's crazy to think about. That's how we started our year in Mercedes-Benz, 60 plus thousand people. And then, you know, all these, <laughs> the world shut down. And right about that time in February, towards the end of February, beginning of March, I just, this song kind of came back into my focus and I just couldn't put it down. And I knew I needed help uh, to get out of what, you know, where the song had been, even though I loved it, I just didn't feel like the, the, all the bolts were tightened down. And so that's when I reached out to Brenton, who was laying in bed one night and then I sent him this text. <laughs> <laughs> and said, could you listen? And what I love about Brent over the, getting to write with, with you over the years is you have such a great church sensibility about what, how and what the church needs to be singing. And so I feel like you really helped us uh, take this song where it needed to go. So now you can now you can pick up, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess this up, Brian. Well, when I I mean when I heard the song, I was actually at that writers I think that writers retreat, and I remember Lee and Brett and Jonathan coming in and singing it and thinking, well, at least we got one great song out of this weekend. Like I, I was like, this is the song. And so I was so stoked to hear it then. And then I you know I went back to California and carried on with my life. And then when Brett sent it over, he was. Uh, he said, what do you think of this? And I went, man, this is this is a really good song. And then he's also very patient and wily. And he said, um, uh, he said, I, I still feel like it needs, like, I, I might need some things. What, what do you think? So I sat with it for a bit. And because COVID, there was a lot of thinking time available. So I think I think the church is in for some good songs. That's what I'm, I That's think right. Jesus has got a store. Right. Anyway, so I had a lot of time to think, but there was there was a moment when I looked at the lyric that there was, uh, and it went, uh, it went, it, it, it did exactly what we have right now, but it went closer to a more personal confession, a more personal description of, of what I walk with God is like. And I, and I remember thinking, man, um, this song actually has, like it's 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 one of those songs that has the capacity to move into high praise where mm -hmm. we look at God but we don't feel so distanced from him. It's it's not so big that you're like, oh man, this song's for the other people. 
for the archangels and the cherubim you know i can't sing the song it just felt, it just felt like oh man like a country boy like me could maybe sing the song you know so so i said to brett i went man i wonder if it's worth just seeing if we can um posture the song towards like um the majesty of god uh, because i think you guys are so close why, why don't you do that and then he t- texted back. He went, I've been wanting to write a song like that for 10 years. That's what he said. <laughs> and then I texted back. I went, me too. Um, so, so they're, they're not easy to write. I like, so what, um, what Jonathan and Lee and Brett had put together is unusual. Uh, mm. I, I just thought it, there was something very precious about it. Um, yeah. yeah. And Jonathan, you know, when he gets to that bridge, man, that, um, it, it's a little bit almost like, cause it's such a beautiful song, you know, and, and it's, it's so easy to sing. And then the bridge is like, kind of like a, just a holy punch in the face there. <laughs> and, and it's, it's so good. I mean, that's the piece of it that when I think of, you know, in, in being in church of a hundred or being in a room full of thousands, that's what, you know, I would want to sing with a group of people, but talk a little bit about, just the flow of the song into that bridge there. It's so big. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I feel like this song for me started a little differently than most songs because it was the first day of that camp. And, you know, what we do a lot of times in those camps is we just, we kind of kick it off with seeking the Lord and, and praying and, and worshiping. And, you know, that's not always how I start writing sessions uh, here at my studio, you know, unfortunately we just, time and schedules and everything. But I remember just being so postured and, and, and walking in to that right with these guys. Uh, it's just it sort of felt like the overflow of that moment that had started in that room just uh, across the glass there. And um, and it was, I just remember us all in that room singing and, and praying. And I think that's kind of what at least put me in that headspace of just it, nothing needed to be uh, clever, you know, nothing needed yeah. to be uh overwritten or tricky it was just sort of a, an outpouring of, of praise and uh i even remember after the chorus was kind of formed a little bit and we just started kind of opening the bibles on our phones and stuff and, and just trying to find what, some scripture to sing and, and what how can we just just use scripture you know just to well, who does the lord say that he is in the scriptures and to say those things and um and yeah, I mean, the bridge uh, the song has a, has a sweetness to it. And I, I love how every section kind of has these, uh, each section kind of has its own identity, you know? And then that bridge, like you said, is, is such a, a cool little third piece to have in there that it does kind of, it gives you a moment to sort of respond to everything that we've said mm. up yeah. to that point. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. That, that's what it felt like to me, too. It's like that's the response, you know, of all of the things you've said about the Lord at that point. You get to respond uh, in such a powerful way in that bridge. It's so good. One of the things that I love about the bridge is, you know, our pastor here at Passion City, Louis, he always helps us and our worship team see, like, as we're leading worship or, or we're writing these songs, but it's when the weight of the gospel falls down into people's hearts that's when the worship comes up. And I feel that when I sing that bridge, because yeah. it's like, I know what my chains were, and I know what Christ did for me. You know, to think about this Lord, like you said, Leland, earlier, left all of it, stepped off his throne of it in eternity and stepped into my world. And he rescued me, saved me, and he left all that stuff in an empty grave. He left that old dead self back in the empty grave. So, I know why I'm singing, <laughs> you know, it's because, so for me, that's what that bridge is just, it's, it's this gospel weight that falls and I, I, it makes me want to sing it even louder, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Man, it's such, that's such good thoughts, guys. I, I feel like I could talk with you guys for an hour or two just on uh, this song and on the Lord. It's so good. Um, but thank you guys so much for making the time to get together and, yeah. Talk about this song, Brett. Congratulations, man. I can't wait for Again. Passion to release this song and for churches to be able to sing it. So thank you, guys. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you. This is appreciate awesome. It. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. Well done, Brett. <laughs> well done, everyone. <laughs> you are the Lord. Forever lifted high. You are the Lord. 
compassionate and kind you are.